Hello and welcome inside the WOSN studios. Time for another Mark's Madness. Mark Shine alongside Matt Finkel. Mark, we're about two and a half weeks out or a little, little less than three weeks out from the boys basketball draws. So things are starting to heat up on the hardwood and let's break it down from what we saw in the previous week, beginning with Lima Senior. Now Lima Senior had a tough week, right? But they passed yeah. all their tests, including Monday's victory at Flying to the Hoop, 83-66 over Thurgood Marshall. Xavier Simpson had 22 that night. Uh, Wilson had 17, bounced back from kind of a subpar Saturday night game for him. Had five three-point field goals. They've got it on a roll. Some tough games coming up. In fact, tonight they're going to Toledo St. Francis. That's a tough challenge. You know, they were at Dayton last night. The game didn't start until 8.30. You're home late. Now you're on the road. And we know all the travel situations going up I-75. I think it's kind of a tough game for a team that's actually 9-3 and three or 8-3 and three right now and 3-3 three and three in conference play. And then they've got St. John's on Friday Absolutely. night. Absolutely. So that's going to be a tough one. And then Tuesday, a week from tonight, LCC. So a pretty difficult stretch of schedule for Lima Senior coming off wins over Whitmer and OG last week. Mentioned Thurgood Marshall. And then you said St. Francis, St. John's, LCC. This the test. Yeah, they're going to get into the meat of their schedule right now, and we kind of knew this was coming. They're, they're kind of backloaded and heavy with games that they're going to play in the month of February, but they're in a real interesting schedule right now. Of course, St. John's was that one point win earlier in the year up at St. John's, and a win there would probably lock up the track, although lots of games yet left to play. Right, so I'm a senior 5 0 in the track, St. John's 5 1. Finley sitting at 3-3, three and three, and that game against St. John's Friday going to go a long way to yep. deciding the track. Looking forward to that one. We'll have it for you on WOSN. Now let's talk about LCC, the other unbeaten in <laughs> Lima, and it's been exciting in Lima. Before we get into LCC, what do you think this says about the state of basketball in Lima right now to have these two teams off to the start that they are? Well, let's talk about three teams because you're right. We've got the, the really good start by Lima Senior. LCC Perry is playing very, very well right now, too. We're going to get to them, but there is three teams right there just right within the, the confines of the Lima area who could go very deep in the tournament. It's, a, it's been a lot of fun to follow so been. far. And LCC, an impressive weekend for them because they had a challenging one as well with wins against Crestview on Friday night and then Versailles on Saturday. Uh, two very good teams that they beat. The thing I really liked about them, over their last three games, they've made 18 three-point field goals. So we've always known Coach Kill preaches defense. Now they're, they're adding a, an extra dimension to their game because when you can shoot the three like they do, then you've got your slashers who can get to the rim. Cobbs can get to the rim. Dixon can get to the rim. Uh, Dantes Walton can get to the rim. So when you spread the floor out with a three-point shooting and then you're able to drive as well as they are, really makes them good offensively. They've won 10 straight games by double digits. So yep. even though we knew this weekend was going to be challenging for them, they still won both games by double digits. Now tonight, Tuesday, they go to Chaminade Julien. Another ranked team. You're right, and that's another challenge for them. Of course, we've talked about it multiple times on the show. Coach Kill's gone out and found people to play. Their close game of the year, they have a win over Toledo St. John's by eight, and that's their close game of the year. They need to get challenged, I think, because they've got some games coming up. Obviously, you want to play well in the tournament, but uh, they've got a good schedule starting tonight. Bath on Saturday for the T-Birds, followed by Lima Senior on a Tuesday, a right. week from tonight. In the NWC, we've got a third unbeaten in the area, and it's Lincoln View, and right. they just continue to win. They're finding ways to do it. Eight seniors, great balance. They're playing confidently right now, 14-0, 4-0 in the league. You know, the thing I like about them, they have uh, 38 times somebody has scored in double figures. And if you figure out and go through that, that means that they're averaging three players in yeah. double figures per game. Makes them very difficult to guard. We talked last week about how solid they have been defensively. That makes them very difficult to guard when you have that kind of balanced scoring. Yeah, that's a great statistic. They all get along so well that it, it seems like this was something that they believed they could achieve, and it's great to see them doing it. Well, that says something about their players. It also says something about their coaching staff, because when you have eight seniors, there's not enough playing time to make everybody happy. So you need to find a way to keep guys on the floor, keep them competing against each other in practice, and keep getting better. But likewise, you need to have players who buy into what you're trying to do and, and willing to be a part of that team. And that's definitely what we're seeing over at Lincoln View. Now, in the NWC, tie for second place right, right now between Jefferson and Spencerville. Jefferson's 10 and 4 overall, Spencerville's 10 and 2. They're both 3 and 1 in the league. Jefferson seems to be playing some good basketball right now. I really like what's going on over there. Now, we've talked about before how they get a lot of points out of Stockwell and out of Smith, so I was trying to find a way to really emphasize that. Jay Stockwell this year twice has been in 20 figures, 20 points or more in a game and not been the leading scorer for his team because Smith has outscored him in those particular games. So they score a lot of points, they're those two, and then they get a lot of balance scoring from some other guys, but those two guys are really talented. 
The Wildcats beat Ada in overtime on Friday. Ada will play you tough in the NWC. Don't don't be surprised, uh, you know, when you when you get into a close matchup with them. We've talked about that before. How balanced the conference is. Ada is just one of those teams that they're not going to win the conference, but you better make sure you show up and play, or they can give you problems. Meanwhile, Spencerville beat Allen East on Friday night, and they continue to play well. I mean, only those two losses for the Bearcats. Yep. The, the one point loss to Lincoln View, of course, is the one that's going to be a problem for them as we play into the, the rest of the conference schedule. Dakota Pritchard averaging 14.6. Zach Golke now has got it going, averaging 13.8 over the last five games. The Christmas break did him a lot of good, got him rested up, got that injury situation taken care of. Mason Nurse struggled on January 8 and 9 that weekend, but came back last weekend with 22 points combined in the two games. He's got it going again. They always play solid defense, so it's, it's good things going on right now in Spencerville. Zach Gokey went over 1,000 career points last week mm -hmm. as well, something that we were keeping an eye on. Congratulations to him. Crestview's 9-3, and 2-1. and one. We right. mentioned the loss to LCC on, on uh, Friday night. Now they play Shawnee Tuesday and then Lincoln View Friday. Absolutely. We've talked all year about Connor Lotzenheiser averaging 21 points a game. He's had four different games this year where he's made at least five three-point field goals. So we know he can shoot the basketball. He's been a leader for those four freshmen that, that play a lot of time for them. Javon Etzler averaging 14 points per game over the last three. They've got it going. It's at Lincoln View that kind of favors the Lancers a little bit. But that'll be a very good basketball game. So let me ask you this. Do you think Lincoln View can run the table knowing that they have Crestview on Friday and Jefferson the following Friday? Well, those are the two games. They're, they're the keys. Can they? Yes, they have the talent. They have the seniors to do that. I think it's a real challenging weekend. Crestview at home and then the, the struggle to go to the stage and play at Jefferson and the, the two good scores that they have there. We'll really find out about the Lancers over the next couple of weeks. All right, moving on now to the Western Buckeye League. Yep. Mark, there's only two unbeatens left. We yep. entered the week with three. None of them played each other, so they right. all could have remained unbeaten in the league, I'm talking here. Defiance, 10-3. OG, 11-3 overall. They're both 4-0 now in the WBL. And they play each other this week. Looking forward to doing that game with Mark Miller and the Truck 2 guys when we go up to, to Defiance on Friday night. Um, but you're right, uh, they have Defiance this week. Then they have Wapak coming up late in February, middle of February, so those are kind of big things for them. Uh, the problem with them is that when they don't defend because OG – Averages 51.5 points per game defensively in the games that they win. They have to find a way to, to play defense. That typically plays in well to what Defiance does because Defiance is a solid team that doesn't make a lot of mistakes but also doesn't run the score up. So it's going to be a very close battle up there. Wapak was the team that lost, picked up its first league loss. They fell to Bath. We said that the Wildcats were due for a win, right? Yeah, there have been so many close games. Five games uh, decided by five points or less. Five games decided by a total of 16 points. And Ran Renner makes a big basket late to win the basketball game for them after just kind of a close defensive struggle throughout the whole game. Good win for the Wildcats. With their former coach on the other yeah, bench, right. right? So another yep. interesting piece to that game. So we had OG beating Shawnee on Friday. And I just want to talk about the Indians because that snapped their winning streak. Right. But then the Indians rebounded on Saturday with a win over a very good Wayne Trace team. That was a, kind of a surprise win after coming off a tough loss on Friday night for the Shawnee. But the thing about them is, do the Indians defend? Because in the games that they uh, have lost, they've given up more than 70 points or more on an average. So in those four losses, defense has been a the problem. They can score. We know O'Neal can, can score. We get balanced scoring from other guys as well. But if they can defend, that's the key for them. Defiance beat Salina and Fairview over the weekend. And OG over Shawnee, then OG lost to Lima Senior, like we yep. talked about. So one of the themes of the week is the top teams in a couple of these leagues playing each other. Like you said, OG and Defiance, who you got? Yeah, well, it's at Defiance. And let's, let's look at a couple different things. First of all, it's Defiance's turn to win the conference because Defiance wins it in even-numbered years. Um, they won it in 10, 12, 14. Now we're in 2016. It's Defiance's turn to win again. Surprised to find out, going back and doing some research, OG has not won the Western Buckeye League since 2009. And we kind of think of them as being the gold standard program because they're so good year in, year out. And they've always been in the top two or three, but they've not won the conference since 2009. Very interesting to hear that. That's not something that you would expect. So right. we'll see if OG can pick up the victory against Defiance and be on their way to their first WBL title since 09. Now we got to talk about the MAC mark because oh. there was a big game in yep. the MAC. Big for big. recovery versus sales, and it goes to overtime. 54-51 win for the Indians at home. They're now 9-2 and overall versus sales is 10 and 3. They were they both came into this one unbeaten in MAC play. And, and it would get us because Fort Recovery was able to defend and when they're able to defend when they've got a lot of guys who played a lot of basketball for them and they came out years ago they were just kind of the pieces that fit around a college but now these are guys who have played a lot of basketball 
and they're very experienced. Cox and Martin, and Carton, Cox and Sheff are both averaging about 13 points per game. A lot of other guys in that 6, 8, 10 point range. And when they defend well, as they did against a very good uh, Versailles team, Arms got in foul trouble, had only five points in the course of the basketball game. That obviously hurt Versailles, but a good win for Fort Recovery. Tough weekend for Versailles because yep. they lost Fort Recovery and then they lost to LCC on Saturday but this is still a pretty good basketball team. They are. Arns bounced back with 17 points on Saturday night. It's a good basketball team, and they're going to go do some damage in the tournament. Uh, unfortunately, with that loss for them, that overtime loss, they're kind of struggling now in the MAC. They're going to have to hope somebody knocks off Fort Recovery, which this may be the week that might happen. Right, because Coldwater plays Fort Recovery in another right. situation where two of the top teams in the league square off. Coldwater is the only other unbeaten in the league at 3-0. They beat Parkway and Arcanum this weekend. Who do you like Friday night? Well, the key is, is how does, does, does Andy Brunette play for Cobar? You know, he has that double figure rebounds, points, and block shots not long ago last weekend. He's 6'9". If he can control the interior, they can win the basketball game. And, of course, they have the game at Coldwater, so that helps too. But Fort Recovery is playing so well and so much experience. I kind of like Fort Recovery, but it's one of those things that's so small. It, let's just play it out and see what happens. It's going to be a very interesting one at the Palace. Quickly, elsewhere in the MAC, Marion Local falls to St. Henry, and then they come back and beat Jackson Center Saturday. Another huge night for Mitchell Stallman. I was there in the second quarter of this game. He had 18 with six minutes to go in the second quarter. So that right. means in the first like eight, eight to ten minutes of game action, he had 18 points. Yeah, he has just been filling it up all year long for St. Henry, and he's just done a great job for them. And you mentioned Murray Local, a nice win defensively, what they did at Jackson Center, one of the top teams in the SCAL. It's a good win for Murray Local to come back after that one. All right, it's time for our play breakdown. So okay. we're going to talk about the Northwest Central Conference, and we want to take a look at the Perry Commodores who have been playing great basketball, and they're doing it with good defense yep. and transition offense. Show us how. Well, first of all, let's look at what they're going to do defensively and, and how smart they are defensively with what they do. Coaches talk about trap situations, get your hands up and force the, the offense to make a mistake. That's a charge as he just shoves his way through. It's going to happen again right here. Both hands straight up, knock the guy over trying to get out of a trap. And too often what happens in these situations as we watch, here comes the trap here, and it's going to be another trap right here. Hands go straight up so there's no place for the defender to go. He just lowers his shoulder right here. And watch Coach Tabor's reaction because he knows his guys did exactly what they're supposed to do trap with your hands up and not reach in and create the foul. Those are two offensive turnovers right there, thanks to playing good defense. And then to get out in transition go, here's the loose ball pickup behind the back dribble, all the way down the floor, the bounce pass that goes across the lane into the hands uh, by Jacoby Lane Harvey. There's a basket right there. Here's another one that's going to occur, a steal at the end, polling with the steal. And when the big fellow runs, you get into basketball. This is Kobe Glover. He runs the floor. They get it to him. Watch the really nice behind the back pass that's going to come right in here. You can see right here, here's the basketball out of the hands of Lane Harvey. Here's the big fellow running the floor, and when he goes, watch this pass, the little flip behind the back, and in the rule book, point guard, when your big fellow runs, you get in the ball, you expect him to defend and rebound for you. When the big guy goes, you get into basketball like they did right there. A little chance for Kobe to show off a bit running the floor and, and more. The, the pass, it was more actually the pass. Let, that was the. Uh, yeah, was, how about that? Let's uh, talk about just one little part about that. Perry was averaging 70 points per game offensively in the three games that, that they picked up the, with Glover play. Yeah. They're now averaging 86.7 over the last three games. So, so what an asset he, he oh, is. Oh, what an yeah. asset he is. He defends, he rebounds, gets out in four and goes in transition can score in the low box. He's done some good things, helped him out. So Perry's 12 and two overall now, yep. four and oh in the league. Temple is seven and six, two and one, coming off an OT victory over Ridgemont, then lost to Miller City on Saturday. We've been saying it most of the year, still feels like Perry's league to lose. It does. I would think that they're gonna have a win this week over Hard Northern, a scrappy team, but one which Perry probably has more athletes that will go. The next big game in that conference is February 5th, when Perry goes to Temple with a chance to wrap up the conference that night. And the other thing is about that conference, USV has been playing very well lately. You know, They've one come point, on. Yeah. They, they, on December 26th, they lost to Macomb. They were 3-6. and six. Since that time, they've won five straight. They've got it going. Uh, they, their defense during those five games, they've given up just in the 40s all five times. And Dotson scored at 18.2. Daniels at 10.6. He's made 12 three-point field goals in that run of five games. So they've really got it going now at USV. Blanchard Valley Conference, interesting again. LB, 6-0 atop the league, 9-3 yep. overall. Three teams are 5-1. It's Lipsick, McComb, and Van Buren. How do you see this league playing out? The Eagles coming off wins 
or a win over Van Lu and then lost to Ottawa Hills on Saturday. Yeah, Ottawa Hills, of course, very good program up there, and that's one of those type of things you look forward to tournament time when you see a team like that and how you're going to play against a very good basketball team. Well, Liberty Benton gets Arlington at home, then they get Macomb at home, so those are the two top teams chasing them. They've already got a win over Lipsick. So uh, I, you would think that LB is the favorite right now, but not prohibitively with those two schools coming up. I want to talk about the PCL next, and a good segue is that Fort Jennings beat Macomb on Saturday. It's right. a good win for Fort Jennings, but the big game in the Putnam County League, Kaleida beats Grove by nine, and they secure first place. Yeah, Mark Miller and I were there to see that game, and I felt a little bit bad for Columbus Grove. They had played Lincoln View on Friday night, and just everything they did seemed to be a little step slow. Shots were a little bit short. Not that Kaleida didn't play well. I don't want to take anything away from the Wildcats, but it would have been nice to see a fresh Columbus Grove team play that night. And now Kaleida matches up with Lipsick in what's going to be a huge matchup, too. So that's another big one, and where our top teams in the league squaring well, off, and the PCL will do it again. Let's take Lipsick. They were 2-3 and three at one point. Now they won six out of the last seven. The only loss was a loss to Grove by a point, which is a problem because they're now a game down in the conference standings to Kaleida. But Kaleida has to go to Lipsick, go to Ottoville, go to Wayne Trace, go to Miller. City, so three out of the next four games are road games or conference games with a road game of Wayne Trace mixed in there. We'll find out about the Wildcats yeah, soon too. Pretty difficult upcoming schedule. Yep. All right, so we talked about a lot of the games we're looking forward to this weekend. Is there one or two that are really standing out to you? Well, it's really easy to look at, at Ottawa Glendorf and Defiance. That's obviously a huge matchup uh, in that conference. The winner will be the favorite to carry things out through the rest of the conference play. I'd like to see the Lima Senior St. John's game as well. That's a big game on Friday night, and St. John's will come in and improve ball club coach Ed Heinzel always does a good job and we'll see how the Spartans respond after this very difficult week of schedule they play those are probably the two top games in the conference schedules this week well you're going to like our rebroadcast schedule then, because we've got a lot of good ones coming up let's take a look at what you can watch when it all begins Wednesday at 7 30 p.m. with Heidelberg versus Ohio Northern women live and then Wednesday 9 30 Pandora Gilboa against Bluffton Friday 10 30 that's the OG defiance game Friday 10 44 on WTLW St. John's Lima Senior so Great matchups for you on Friday night. Really looking forward to that. Busy day Saturday, 3 p.m. Capital versus Ohio Northern Men Live. 7 p.m. Arlington against Liberty Benton. Saturday at 8.30, Fort Recovery Coldwater, that big one in the MAC. Saturday, 10.30, OG versus Columbus Grove. Saturday, 10.30 on WTLW, Delta St. John's against Spencerville. Sunday, two games, Shawnee versus LCC Girls at 7, followed by New Bremen, Jackson Center, Boys at 8.30. So that's our rebroadcast schedule. You can always check the website, WOSN.TV, for the full schedule, including replay times of those games. Thanks so much, Mark. Great job, as always. That does it for this week's Mark's Madness. We'll see you next week.